Hello and welcome. Try this problem on your own. You probably want to get a calculator and also some paper to draw this thing out. It's kind of a, I think, a bit of a confusing scenario. And then press play when you're ready to solve it with me. All right, so let's read this piece of a problem. It says a rectangular picture measures six by eight inches. So I'm going to just start by sketching right away. We've got a six by eight frame, something like this. Not to scale, of course, but that's close enough. Six by eight. And Simon wants to build a wooden frame for the picture so that the frame picture takes up a maximum area of 100 square inches on the wall. So, so far this has an area of 48. 6 times 8 is 48. We're going to make it larger to have an area of about 100. So I don't know where the larger is going to be exactly, but it's just going to be bigger, right? I want to draw a rectangle around the original. And that's actually not that great of a rectangle, so we fix that. Something like this. I'm drawing like this. I'm trying to make it even on each side. That's a lot of questions here. I'm going to assume I haven't even read the rest yet, but typically there's some even growth around the original rectangle. Um, but let's see what happens. The pieces of wood that he uses to build the frame all have the same width. That is, I apologize for this terribly phrased piece right here, but basically they're saying that, okay, the wood we use to build this frame, they all have equal width. So what does that mean? So I guess if there's a piece of wood right here, dot, 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 imagine this like plank of wood right here, its width would be x, right? And this is x as well. And then this piece of wood, I guess, over here, it also has a width of x. Remember, width can be up or down or left or right. So wherever we put a piece of wood, they're going to have an equal width of x. So these are all these x's. So we're trying to find, to get this new larger frame, which has an area of 100, um, we're trying to find what do we have to add to each side. That's what they're really asking you. Um, so I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Right? An equation or inequality uh, that could be used to determine the maximum width of the pieces of wood uh, for the frame. So how big are these pieces of wood going to be? Because the, we're trying to keep it at a maximum of 100, and we already got 48 square inches. So how big could x be? And to, to kind of quantify that, I'm going to say that the total height of this frame is going to have to be 6 here, right? So it's 6, and then plus x here and plus x there. So it's plus 2x, and that's how tall this whole frame is going to be. Then for the area, we're going to multiply that by the other direction, which is going to be 8 plus 2x, right? There's a width of 8 right here, and then x and x. Now, if we multiply those two dimensions, that's going to give us the area, which is 100. But we want to equation or inequality, I guess I could have written that, but I'm gonna write like this, less than or equal to 100, because the total area, the product, the product of six plus two x and eight plus two x can be at a maximum 100. Then we wanna explain how our equation or inequality uh, models the situation. So I guess I never really know what to say here for the explanation. So what I'll do is I'll paste a student explanation from the samples that got full credit. Let's just read that. We'll talk about different things you could say. My x represents the amount of uh, pictures increased. Area is length times width. x plus 8 is my new length, and x plus 6 is my new width. So, oh, there's a mistake here, right? The, the new width is actually, so almost full credit, 2x plus 8 and 2x plus 6. So this is the kind of explanation you can give just saying what these things up here represent. And you can go further. You can say, I multiply the new length and width uh, because I'm finding area. And area is the product of your length and your width, or your height and your width, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, as long as you kind of explain what the components of these equations are, you could say, I put it less than or equal to 100 because the maximum area is 100. And now they want us to solve this equation. And I, I just, I, I look at this and I'm thinking, uh, we got to first distribute. And simplify, so let's do that first. We've got 6 times 8 is 48. 6 times 2x is 12x, which you need to distribute a property here. 2x times 8 is 16x, and 2x times 2x is 4x squared. This is less than or equal to 100. Oops, put 0. So now to solve this, um, I'm thinking quadratic formula because you've got a pretty complicated equation. I'm just going to simplify things first. 12x and 16x is 28x. And I'll write it in standard form. That means the, the highest power goes first. So 4x squared plus 28x and then plus 48. 
is less than or equal to 100. Um, okay, so let's now subtract 100 from both sides because once we have 0 on one side of our equation, we can figure out what x is. So 4x squared plus 28x uh, minus uh, 52 is less than or equal to 0. So to make my life a little bit easier, I could, I could do this here, but I'm just going to divide by 4 on both sides because that's a common factor and it makes the numbers a little bit less uh, intimidating. So that would be x squared plus 7x minus uh, 13. Now you don't have to do that step. You can still get the same answer as me if you, if you don't divide by 4. But now we know that a is 1. That's the coefficient of x squared. We know that b is 7, right? Because um, that's the coefficient of, of x right here. And we know that c is negative 13. Don't forget that negative sign. We're subtracting 13. And the quadratic formula is uh, the complete explanation of how we complete the square to solve for x. And it's given to you on the exam, uh, but basically it says that x is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And now we just plug in. It's negative 7, negative b, plus or minus the square root, the square root of b squared, 49, minus... 4 times 1 times negative 13. I'll write that out right now. Simplify it later. All over 2 times a or just 2. So now we've got to solve this thing. And we can simplify it, but I want to enter it directly on the calculator. Let it do the hard work for me. Because if you notice, I think they asked for this to the nearest tenth of an inch. So we're gonna we're gonna round this to the nearest tenth of an inch. And um, for for this we could we could actually write Notice it's the plus or minus. There's actually two things happening right here. I'm going to ignore the negative, the minus, because if we have a negative 7 and we are subtracting value from that, we're going to get a negative value. And there's no way we could add a negative dimension to a picture frame. So we're only going to look at the plus here, because we, I know that I, without even precisely calculating this, that subtracting something from negative 7 or even half of negative 7 uh, we'll get a, a new negative value, and we don't want negative values on a picture frame. There's no way to measure that. So what I'm entering the calculator is negative 7 plus the square root of 49, and this is really negative 4. You can think of it as 4 times 1 times negative 13, and then we're subtracting that, so that's going to be a positive 52 over 2. Um, and then... 49 plus 52 is 101, I believe. I'm doing that right. Over 2. So we're going to enter this in the calculator. If I got that right. Negative 7. Oops, I should do parentheses first. I want to enter the whole numerator. Negative 7 plus the square root, second x squared, of 101. Oops, 101. Close parentheses. So we divide everything by 2. Oops, I'm still trapped in my uh, inequality sign, so I press right to get out of it. And this might actually be a syntax error because I have the parentheses, it seems, in the square root sign. So I'm going to go right here to get out of my square root sign. Close parentheses, looks better, divided by 2. And this gets me 1.5249 to the nearest tenth is 1.5. So x is 1.5. That's our answer the nearest tenth of an inch. But let's just understand what's going on. If x is 1.5, think about what this picture frame is going to be. It's going to be 8 plus 1.5 plus 1.5. That's 11. And in this direction, we have 6 plus 1.5 plus 1.5. That's 6 plus 9. Uh, 6 plus 3, or 9. So oops, our two dimensions are 11 and 9. That gets an area of 99, very close to 100, which was our goal here. Uh, and that's what we get around to the nearest tenth. We can get close to 100 if we round to a more precise degree. All right, I hope this helped.